Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. Okay, you guys, today we're going to be talking about alkanes and cycloalkanes. So I wrote up here alkanes and cycloalkanes, and notice I put cycloalkanes in parentheses because a cycloalkane is just a specific type of alkane, all right? Okay, so whenever we start a new topic, we're always going to start out by introducing general features about that topic and then go into the details, all right? So hey, let's start off with general features. All right, so I always like to start out with general features so you get a feel for what we're going to be doing before we get into any of the real details, all right? Okay, so hey, let me start off by asking you guys, can anyone tell me what an alkane is? Okay, well, people who read the book will define an alkane as being a completely saturated hydrocarbon, which is indeed correct, but I'm gonna define it a little differently and you'll see why in just a second. Okay, so hey, an alkane, All right, so what's an alkane, you guys? I like to define an alkane as a carbon compound with general formula CnH2n plus two. Let's write that down. So what is an alkane? An alkane is a carbon compound, CPD, that's my abbreviation for compound. It's a compound with a general formula of CnH2n plus two. C N H two N plus two. All right, so all alkanes are going to follow this same general formula. Any alkane is going to have n number of carbons along with the corresponding number of hydrogens designated in this formula by two times n, the number of carbons, plus two. Okay. Okay, so by defining an alkane like this, it implies that there are going to be as many H's attached to these carbons as possible. And when you have a compound with as many H's attached to the carbons as possible, another name for this is a saturated hydrocarbon. Okay, so hey, let's write this down. This general formula, this implies that the max number of H's are attached that the max number of H's are going to be attached to those carbons in the compound, all right? And since the max number of H's are attached to these carbons, we also call this a saturated hydrocarbon. Therefore, these are also known as saturated hydrocarbons. Okay, so let's give you an example of what this is talking about, and let's just start out with the simplest alkane possible, CH4. Okay, so example, CH4, which is also known as methane, right, you guys? Okay, so if we take a look at this, it's going to have a carbon in the center with four H's bonded to it. One, two, three, four. So this compound has as many H's attached to it as possible. It has the max number of hydrogens attached to a one carbon compound. But how do I know it has the max number of H's attached? Well, hey, how many bonds can carbon make? Four, right? And in this compound, this carbon is bonded to one, two, three, four hydrogens. So we say that this compound has the max number of H's attached. 
And when you have as many hydrogens attached as possible, you are considered to be saturated. But hey, you guys, why do we use this word saturated? I I'm sure you've all heard this word before. Like if you spilled some water and you cleaned it up with a paper towel, then once that paper towel was completely soaked with water and couldn't hold anymore, you'd say that that paper towel was completely saturated with water. And it's the same thing with atoms. This carbon is completely saturated, except he's saturated by hydrogens. He can't hold any more hydrogens, okay? So we say that this guy is a saturated hydrocarbon. And hey, if you guys are wondering, all a hydrocarbon is, is a compound that consists purely of hydrogens and carbons. Hydrocarbon, it's made out of hydrogens and carbons, no other types of atoms, okay? So real simple. Okay, so hey, just to prove to you guys that there are as many H's on this carbon as possible, let's use the general formula of an alkane that we wrote up here to double check that this guy is completely saturated, that he does have the max number of hydrogens attached to him. Okay, so our formula for an alkane is going to tell us exactly how many hydrogens a compound needs to be completely saturated, to be an alkane. So, hey, how many carbons do we have in this guy? One, right, this guy right here. So, okay, number of carbons, this equals N in our formula, right? So, number of carbons equals N, and in this case, with methane, number of carbons equals one. And according to the formula, what is the max number of hydrogens that can go on a one carbon compound? 2N plus two, two times the number of carbons plus two, Okay, so, hey, number of hydrogens, this is 2n plus 2, so this is going to equal 2 times the number of carbons, which is 1, plus 2, and hey, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 2 equals 4. Okay, so what this formula is telling us is that if this compound is indeed an alkane, a saturated hydrocarbon, then it should have four hydrogens on it, right? And does it? Yes, it does. One, two, three, four hydrogens on this one carbon compound. So we say that this compound is an alkane. It is a saturated hydrocarbon. And remember that a saturated hydrocarbon is just another name for an alkane, right, you guys? You can use those words interchangeably because if you're an alkane, you have as many H's attached as possible. And if you have as many H's attached as possible, then you're a saturated hydrocarbon. An unsaturated hydrocarbon, like an alkene or an alkyne, has less than the max number of hydrogens attached. And the way alkenes and alkynes make up for lacking these hydrogens is by forming double or triple bonds. But hey, you're going to see that later. For now, just remember that an alkane has as many H's attached per carbon as possible. Okay, so hey, let's see another example.